As a follow-up to episode 241, there's been a lot of talk about the 100% of AGI deduction that you can get for cash contributions to charities in 2020 and 2021. And their different rules can be confusing in application. So, as a continuation of the 2021 Charitable Income Tax Deduction series, today we're going to dive into the numbers behind some of these rules. I'm Griffin Bridgers, and this is 10 Minutes with Griffin. Fair warning, this episode will probably be longer than 10 minutes. I know I'm not holding true to my brand, but I want to give you as complete of information as I can provide in this slideshow. So I'm going to be as thorough as I can while also remaining conscious of time. Now, as always, I want to remind you that this presentation is not intended to substitute for legal or tax advice and is provided for educational purposes only. And if you enjoyed this presentation or my other content and you'd like to engage me as a speaker at your upcoming event or for, or for an in-house program, you can email me at griffin.bridgers at gmail.com. You can also subscribe to my newsletter at griffinbridgers.substack.com. Now onto the presentation. So, in terms of our order of operations, episode 241 covered an intro that reconciled some of the different charitable contribution rules that we have under Code Section 170, the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act of 2017, and even the CARES Act has been, has, has been extended for 2021. Now, what we're going to dive into today is some of the math behind the 100% of AGI charitable deduction. And we'll be referring to some material that has been introduced and will come later. But as we go along, we're also going to cover in the future some of the specific things we look at today, like the math behind traditional contributions subject to lower AGI limits along with contributions of long-term capital gain property and classifications of charities. So, as you may or may not know, the CARES Act was passed in 2021 and it expanded the amount you could deduct as a percentage of your AGI for contributions that took place in 2020 and 2021 because the CARES Act relief here was extended by the Omnibus Reconciliation Bill at the end of 2020. So, in order to have this 100% of AGI charitable contribution, which is a bit of a misnomer in and of itself, you have to have a qualified contribution. So what is a qualified contribution? Well, it has to meet these attributes. It's a contribution paid by cash or check after December 31 of 2019. And what I didn't mention here is it has to be made on or before December 31 of 2021 because contributions in 2022 or credited to 2022 probably will not qualify here. You also have to have a contribution to a public charity, the definition of which, which we'll cover later. And this won't include a donor-advised fund or a supporting organization of a public charity. And the taxpayer has to, according to the letter of the law, make an election to apply this special rule, but there's no procedure for that election. It's just simply a decision as to whether to apply the 60% limit to cash contributions or the 100% limit to cash contributions, which, as we're going to find out, work at diametrical ends of the actual formula and order of operations when we're calculating what you can actually deduct for the given year. In other words, what we're going to find out is that we're going to have the 100% AGI applying net of all other deductions first. Now, before we move on, stop. You have to check some of the following. One, are you itemizing? The 100% of AGI charitable contribution only applies if you itemize your deductions for 2021. Now, if you don't itemize, there is a $300 above the line deduction you can get, but you only get it if you do not itemize. So it's an either or. You have to either select the $300 above the line or up to 100% of AGI below the line. The other question is, this isn't automatic. Should you claim the 100% deduction? Because with rising tax rates and maybe higher income next year, it may make sense to just apply the 60% limit now and carry some cash contributions over to subsequent years if, for example, you anticipate higher income in a subsequent year or if the tax rates go up, which it's looking like they may do based on current reform proposals. So, the easiest way to really work through this holistically among all the episodes we're going to look at 
is in IRS Publication 526. In the middle, you'll find Worksheet 2, which allows you to do the math on charitable contributions in all the different bands of AGI limits. But the important thing to note here is that even though this is a 100% of AGI deduction, it applies net of all other charitable contributions and carryovers under the other lower limits, the 60%, 50%, 30%, and 20%. That's illustrated here because what I've cut and pasted is the part of Worksheet 2 that applies to qualified cash contributions because, as you'll see, that comes in starting at line 52. Well, guess what? You have to cover lines 1 through 51 first before you ever get to this. So this netting principle is illustrated. So really, you're only getting to deduct 100% of what's left of your AGI after subtracting out the deductible amount of all other charitable contributions and carryovers. So to illustrate this, let's look at the following facts. So we have a taxpayer who has a hundred or a million of AGI in 2021, and their charitable deductions or contributions are as follows. One, they have 800,000 in cash to a public charity. They also have 80,000 as a qualified charitable distribution out of their IRA. They have 100,000 in cash to a donor advised fund and 100,000 in appreciated stock held more than one year that's given to a CRUT. Now, before we even get into the 100% calculation, which would really apply here to the item in line one, we have to also cover lines two, three, and four. And we can take out the line two contribution because that's not included in your taxable income at all. The qualified charitable distribution goes directly from the IRA to a charity and reduces your required minimum distribution, but is not taken into account itself in your gross income. So because of that, there's nothing to deduct there. You can't double dip. Now, line three is subject to a 60% limit, not the 100% limit, because you can't get the 100% deduction for a contribution to a donor advised fund. But you can use the 60% limit here. And it's also going to be fully deductible because the amount in line three is only 10% of AGI. Similarly, in line four, we're going to have a 20% or 30% AGI limit. And we can't use the 100% there because that's a, a contribution in kind, not by cash or check. But since the 100% is only 10% of AGI, it's going to be fully deductible in 2021 as well. So we're going to assume we have no carryovers from prior years, and here's what we're going to do. Here's some easy steps to look at, which kind of simplify things from publication 526. Step one, look at your total contributions from income that are actually included in AGI. Then you take out all other contributions and carryovers that are subject to the 60%, 50%, 30%, and 20% limits. Then finally, that leaves you at step three, which leaves you with your amount subject to deduction, which really can't exceed your AGI net of all other charitable contributions. So yeah, you're getting to deduct 100% of your AGI in theory, but it's 100% of your AGI after all other charitable contributions have been taken out. So you can't double dip in that regard either. So here's our applicable math from our facts. Step one, we had a million in total charitable contributions. Note we don't count the 80,000 qualified charitable distribution from the IRA because it's not included in gross income. It just simply offsets the required minimum distribution from the IRA for the year. After this, we'll take out all other deductions that aren't eligible for this 100% AGI. We have the 100,000 in cash to the donor advised fund and the 100,000 in securities to the CRUT. Then, after taking that out, we're left with 800,000 in remaining deductions. And that's deductible to the extent it doesn't exceed your AGI minus the other contributions deductible under step two. So that nets out to 800,000, which just so happens to <laughs> allow for that $800,000 contribution to be fully deductible. But this is where the election comes in. And we'll talk about that in a second, but here's a quick pictorial example where really you're going to start with your traditional contributions, walk through the 60%, 50%, 30%, and 20%
you know, netting those out. And then whatever is left, you carry over to look at 100% of remaining AGI after everything in the blue buckets. That's what's in your green bucket that you might get to deduct in this given year to the extent it doesn't exceed your remaining AGI and to the extent it qualifies as a payment by cash or check to a public charity other than a donor advised fund or a supporting organization. And keeping in mind too that to even get here, we have to itemize. So strategy is what really comes into play here, where if you're a taxpayer who anticipates higher gross income in 2022, regardless of what might happen with tax reform and or a higher effective income tax rate in 2022, might make sense to pump the brakes. Do the math. Might it make sense to carry over some of the cash contribution because you might get a better bang for your buck. Any deduction really has an effective tax rate of how much it reduces your income by. Now, after the 100% AGI deduction, you really effectively have a 0% rate, but you also have to note that the 100% deduction applies to cash contributions in excess of the 60% AGI limit and all other contributions and carryovers. So after subtracting those out, it's really important to look at the bracket or effective rate that you can apply to that netted 100% deduction and compare the effective rates between years, maybe by year or averaging between 2021 and 2022 based on whatever might come down the pike. And this is a subject that I might break out a little bit in a, a later um, presentation, but there's been some other uh, speakers out there who have done a really good job of breaking this down. Um, I cite in particular Michael Kitsis, who had a, a recent article on this too, so you may want to check that out. But either way, looking at this, a deduction in full in 2021 will create a 0% effective rate. But looking to 2022, your highest rates, not effective, but highest, are going to be potentially 39.6% for ordinary income. And then in terms of ordering on top of that, you look at potentially a 25% or a 28.8% or even a 31.8% long-term capital gains rate based on the net investment income tax of 3.8% and potentially another 3% high earner income tax that might come into play. And given that reality and those potential higher rates, the carryovers could give you more bang for your buck in 2022 than they might in 2021. But as I said, that's a subject for another time. So what's next? We're going to look to the more math and the actual 60%, 50%, 30%, and 20% AGI tranches. We'll dig into reporting a little bit more, and then we'll look to some of the classifications of charities as well. As always, if you have questions or topic suggestions, you can email those to me at griffin.bridgers at gmail.com, but as a reminder, I cannot give tax or legal advice in response to your questions. But thank you again for uh, listening to this episode of 10 Minutes with Griffin. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one.